Really don't mind if you sit this one out. Hey, what's up, guys? Epic Vlogger 52 here with another cool vlog. Hi, everyone. What's happening? As you can see, it's currently 9.35 on a Saturday. Today is April 28th, 2018. What's up everyone? It's Big Boy Vlogger Joey YouTube 68 here with another epic vlog about my life. Currently we are watching the NBA playoffs and uh you know, I, I don't know, what am I doing? What is this content that you clicked on, presumably? Aha, I see, because that's, that's the long game. That's what you got to do when you're a YouTuber. Because right now, right now it's the present. Right now it's the present, and I'm just recording this with my camera. But presumably, I'm going to edit this content and upload it. And by then, it'll be the future. So, hello, future people. So yeah, watching some sports. A lot of people like to pass their time by watching uh, TV shows or anime. Uh, but that kind of stuff has never really appealed to me. I'm more of a sports kind of guy. Heck yeah, sports. We got, uh, we got Boston. Boston playing Milwaukee in the playoffs. The NBA. First round Eastern Conference playoffs. Big time basketball going on here. Game seven. Win or go home. Man, this is absolutely riveting stuff right here. Welcome back to another Emperor Lemon live vlog reaction video where today we're reacting to the playoffs. By the time this series is over, the NBA playoffs will be over. And, um,. We'll know who the champion is. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Golden State? Is it going to be Houston? Well, uh, currently, I'm about to record audio for uh, Minute Memes. Minute Memes. Minute, Minute, Minute Memes. Haven't done a Minute Memes in a while. Um, but yeah, here's the process. I type everything up in a Google Doc. I'm a script boy, as one YouTube commenter put it. And, uh, in other news today, interesting stuff going on with my boy CeeLo, CeeLo Green. That was a very stupid comment. But he follows me. I think that's new. He follows me back. CeeLo. CeeLo, a good boy. He, uh, he does a bunch of research into how YouTube works. Really, um really instrumental in kind of understanding, helping YouTubers understand the modern workings of YouTube because <laughs> everyone knows YouTube's not going to tell us anything. Today, there's actually a reported anomaly. It's an anomaly, folks. People are losing subscribers. But, um, yeah, it's only, a, it's only big boy, baddie, curse word channels and not a not kitty kid fun toy channels, also Jake and Logan Paul. You see, being a YouTuber is a lot like dealing with stuff like this. Um, YouTube is a huge, huge site, and there's always a ton of stuff going on that no one has any idea. Well, that's pretty much all that happened to me, minus 41. But yeah, be sure to subscribe and help me meet my subscriber goals and like this video, guys. Good goodbye. Hi everyone, me again. Uh, well, yeah, of course it's me again. Who else could it be? I'm the only one editing this. Or never mind. Um, just uh, just having a live look in at the at the fun recording process. So I got everything. Uh. Got everything all dialed up. Audacity. The script. Uh, it's currently 10, 12 p.m. 
And this video will be, um, this video will be edited down to about two minutes. Two minutes, 20 seconds. Let's say that. Um. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me again. And, uh, what I'm doing here is making a timer for Minute Memes. That's right. I'm here in the, uh, I'm here in the text, the text function of Vegas, and, um, I'm going through one by one, adding the numbers, because that's how dedicated I am to making good content. I will go, th I, will, I will jump through the hoops if it means making a final product. That looks good. This new, this new Minute Memes, it's kind of got a football type, football, John Madden, big time football aesthetic. So the thing with that, um, the thing with that style, I'm making the timer have a scoreboard look. And I looked online for just a scoreboard timer and all of them kind of suck. So, I'd rather make my own. Man, nobody watches NASCAR. You know, like, in all the years I went to school, all the kids I ever met, I probably met, like, two others who watch NASCAR. Um... I definitely think it's one of those things that was a lot more popular in the 90s. Because only 90s kids will remember when NASCAR was popular. Just online, it's basically non-existent. It has no online presence because uh, young people don't watch NASCAR. Except for me. I will admit that. A lot of NASCAR races, it's not something you're really glued to the TV set for a while. Um, races like Talladega are very exciting though, just because of uh, the way they tune the cars for this specific track. It encourages pack racing, and at any moment a huge crash can come and take out like half the field. Um, oh. Big crash. See, that's what I was talking about. This style of racing is really unpredictable. Who's gonna win? There's 10 laps left. Can you tell who's gonna win? Leave a comment below if you think you know who's going to win. I'm just kidding, that finish sucked. Fuck NASCAR. Hey, what's up guys? It's me again. It is currently Monday afternoon. Let's see what's going on in the world right now and let's react to it. So, uh, to the top story right now. Oh, Marvel. Damn superheroes. Very, very, uh, very interesting. I definitely care a lot about superhero movies. Um, superheroes are cool and they stop the world from getting destroyed and there definitely aren't enough superhero movies so we need more through 2025 let's see what else uh, the avengers and the, the the spoiler the the infinite avengers infinity superhero movies and the world's gonna get destroyed trump Celebrity died. Sonic. Superhero Avengers superhero. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, hmm, someone fucked up. Oh no, rapper died. Will somebody died. I'm sorry. Am I too callous? This one's in a big block, so you know it's important. I should probably read some of the stuff on the on the right side of the page. 
Oh, epic prank. You can make Siri curse? That's so epic. That's so LMAO. Wow, some people made a Lego tree. A tree made of Legos. You know what? Good for them. Oh, here's a thing that's been going on recently. Kind of just uh, another excuse for people to get outraged for no reason. Celebrity, cool. Celebrities are cool. Oh, wow, Logan Paul, and he's in a big box, so you know it's important. Logan Paul is quitting? Oh, no. What will YouTube do without him? You know, millennials, marketing millennials? Millennial? Millennial Trump? Millennial? Hey, millennials, we need to market to you. Buy our products, because you're millennials. I mean, millennials, the thing about millennials is they, lo they love getting called millennials. And uh, millennials, uh, you ne we need to market to them. Howdy, fellow millennials. Are you guys having fun being millennials? Oh, epic, epic roast. The, 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 the drum, the, the White House correspondent. Oh, she was so epic and she roasted the evil Republicans. It's so funny. Oh, even more coverage on the epic uh, roast and the, the roasted. Um, oh, that's actually something positive about Trump. Okay, we don't need to. We don't need to hear about any of that. We are now rendering the video. My child, my son is being born. Listen to the power. I, I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but. If it is, then listen to the power of the rendering. This is pure bits, zeros and ones getting put into their place. Rendering has completed. Now that the video is rendered, we can begin the most difficult process of being a YouTuber. And that's making a YouTube thumbnail. So I already have a little tab here queued up with uh, my boy John Madden. Uh, but I don't know. I struggle. I, I spend more time on my thumbnails than on the videos themselves, you know, because they're that important. I, I gotta follow in the footsteps of uh, the big YouTubers because how am I gonna make my channel grow up big and strong if I don't have thumbnails like these guys? Okay, so you gotta have a bunch of a bunch of goobers going, no, oh, look at this, oh, I'm reacting to this, oh, what's this, oh, look at me, reacting to things, oh, what's this, a Pokeball, a Pokeball, I'm so surprised, hmm, why does this have a watermark, now these are some high quality reaction images picked Fresh from the fresh garden of fortune. And this looks like a good one. It's just riveting content you're watching right here. Alright, so we got our boy in here. Um, now it's time to add some epic text. At last, my masterpiece is complete. Alright, well now that the thumbnail is complete, it's time to upload the video. So exciting! <laughs> now that the video is public, time to check some YouTube comments. Rip, rip, Ripper the Jack says, Yay! He's happy that I uploaded the video. Yay to you, Ripper. My people. My people. Look at my people. Man, isn't being a YouTuber great? Oh, look everyone, it's a new meme. Get it while it's hot. New meme, everyone. Gosh, I wonder if this meme will still be around in like three months when I upload this video. I think it'll be gone in a couple of days. What's up everybody, it's May 1st. 2018, Tuesday, May 1st. So yesterday, 
I uploaded my video. My big boy, big time uh, meme, epic, epic meme video. It's about 18 hours later, and we're at 46,000 views. whoop a dee doo It's actually uh, probably, probably better than most of my videos do after that amount of time. A couple of other interesting happenings going on. Uh, Internet Historian, my boy, sent me the, uh, the In the Field we worked on. So, uh, it's currently not live yet. I'm getting an extra special preview of, uh, myself. Another one of my boys, Mumkey Jones. He came out with his actual, uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Elliot Rogers parody. And, uh... I actually think I'm going to purchase this. Support my fellow creators on YouTube. I mean, no one else, there's not really anyone else on YouTube who makes content like Mumkey. All right, Mumkey, I'm spending $20, 20 buccaronis. Like, that's like three days of YouTube income for me. I'm spending all of that on your book. So it better be good, and if it's not, I'll probably just complain. Hi everyone, Killer Keemstar here, the king of YouTube drama, and are we witnessing the end of Logan Paul's entire career? Look at that ratio. Look at that ratio. This is the last, the last of the sailors on the Logan Paul ship. They are trying, trying to salvage everything, but it's, it, it's a losing battle. I mean, just look at, look at these numbers. You just got Twittered. Your opinion means nothing because of the ratio, man. This is the end. This is the point of no return. Logan Paul has gone so far down the spiral that he can never emerge. This meme is everywhere. All right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. God! All right, this is it right here. This is for all the marbles. Here we go. Oh! Infinity War meme is dead. Now everyone, ever everyone post this meme. You know what? This meme is pretty good. I think I might make a video on it. Goop Videos was the first one to make this meme. Rev up those fryers, cause I am sure hungry to make a new meme. All right guys, let's make an Emperor Lemon video, right? Here. <laughs> Quick, I gotta render my meme before anyone else steals my idea. Oh wait a minute, someone did my idea already. Guess I have to delete my account now. All right, now that the fucking lame, obvious child's play version of the joke is online, we can get down to business and make a real version of this meme. Ah, now that's more like it. Hey, shut up, idiot. Everyone knows Vsauce makes the best memes. Whoa, all this new meme excitement and there's a new death grips? Oh, slow down, I'm gonna spurt. Well guys, it's been like an hour and a half, but I'm finally done. I masked the thing. This is a productive use of my time. Man, isn't it beautiful? A lot of, a lot of time went into that. That's, that's, that's how much I care about making good content right there. All right, so uh, let's see what we can do with this. Probably 
better that didn't hit. Hans Mole Man Productions presents Man Getting Hit by Chair. Ah, now that is some quality content. Hi everyone, it's me. Just uh, checking in here, and a uh, little news stories uh, trending on Twitter. So, we're going to check that out right now. Oh, so it turns out uh, University of Florida, the school I go to, is a uh, racist. Um, the KKK are running University of Florida. They're nailing crosses in front of all the dormitories and they're burning them. Um, there's just massive lynching activity going on at UF. So I should probably explain the context of this incident because uh, context, in fact, does matter. Um, so here's what happened, as far as I know. So it's May, it's uh, end of the semester, graduation season for seniors in college. A couple of the graduates, they wanted to do a little dance, planned and choreographed, a little bit of a dance. I guess, the, I guess it went against the uh, university etiquette or whatever, and they were having none of that, so they, they yanked them off the stage. I don't know, I think they should have been allowed to dance. Um, I think that uh, that course of disciplinary action was a little bit rigid, a little antiquated. It's a big moment for them, let them dance. Like, their whole life has been leading up to this big graduation, and like, I don't really mind that, but that's pretty much where the story should end. Yet, somehow, because the authority figure on stage was a white man, and the quote-unquote victims were black young adults, the media has interpreted and spun and labeled the story as a racially charged offense. You can argue about the discipline all you want, okay? You can argue about the discipline. Is it a disciplinary issue? Yes, sure. Debate all you want about the discipline and the force they used, but to sit there and call this a racial issue is beyond misleading. To demonstrate my point even further, let's just, let's just look at these headlines. Several black University of Florida graduates yanked off stage University responds to charges of racism from Good Morning America. Good Morning America, here's another reason why you guys are racist. Black University of Florida students, after several black graduates. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't present these issues racially when they're clearly not racially motivated, okay? Like, why can't it just be students? Well, because then you can't spin it as a racial issue and no one will click on your story. So that's why they do it, to get clicks, but it's just damaging for society. ABC News. Now this is big boy journalism, old school, but this is another thing they do. It was definitely contingent on a race, one student tells. Yeah, so the opinion of one student is, is just valuable enough to put in, in the headline of the tweet. He said this, he said, she said, one, one person out of a thousand said this, let's put it in our headline. Because once again, you gotta spin it. This is American Journalism 2018. University of Florida forced apologize after black and minority graduates were shoved off the stage by white. Why does this have to be a racial issue? Well, it's obvious why, so that people will get mad and click on their article, but... I guarantee you in two more weeks, I'll be back with another story where the media does this. I guarantee it. All right, so allow me to elaborate for a bit on why journalism like this is just so bad and so damaging for society. So what it basically, what it basically does, it, it creates a vicious cycle. So the cycle goes a little something like this. Um, there, there's, an, there's an event that happens and it happens to contain a white authority figure and a black victim, okay? Doesn't matter what the event is. The, the context doesn't matter at all. 
media picks up on it. They frame it as a racial issue. People see it, they're outraged. They have, they develop this perception of society that everything is racist. And then when an event like that happens again, they interpret it as racist and it gets picked up by the news again. And the cycle continues. There are many ways to look at something and interpret it. You could look at the sun with no context of how the universe works and believe that the sun revolves around the earth. But that doesn't exactly make it true. Context matters, okay? Let me give you another example. A news company can report on vaccinating children and they can title the article, Geriatric Rich White Men Want to Stick Sharp Needles Inside of Your Children. Yeah, it's factually true, but just the fact that you have completely ignored the context of the situation means that you are creating a false perception for the public. That's problematic. We shouldn't have a society where people are led to believe that everything around them is inherently racist. It's very unstable. Would you rather have that or a society where people get along? I definitely want the second one. I don't know about some of these people. I don't know, it's like, it's like they want society to be more divided, which is obviously it's in complete contradiction to their whole message of anti-racism, but I feel like that's what a lot of these people want. They want to keep Americans divided and fighting among each other so that they can ignore actual issues that if they were to be reported on would harm the rich and powerful. It's like, why would you want to cherry pick and nitpick and comb through society and identify every single instance possible? That's like not even confirmed. The vast, vast, vast majority of these cases that are reported in the media, they're non-race issues and they get labeled as race issues. Why would you want to go through and cherry pick every single little example you can from America, a country of 320 million people, millions of interactions going on every second around the country, and you find one, you find one thing that you contort into a racial issue and you blow it up and say, whoa, whoa, look, this is evidence, look, we're right. Look how racist America is. And I just don't see it. And, and for most people, most readers, most readers of those news articles, that's the end of it. They don't, it, it's solidified in stone for them. A University of Florida racist. Of course, this news story, it's just gonna be forgotten about, but I don't know. I chose this specific example to talk about because, like, I go to UF. It's not run by racist people, okay? And the fact that the media has taken this tiny little incident and blown it up to a story of national prominence, it really shows how they just care more about justifying their agenda than they do about presenting reality. I guess what I'm trying to say is that these stories do a lot more harm than good. They turn people against each other, make racial groups hate each other, and I don't think that's good for society. Hi everybody, it's Wednesday morning and I'm fucking pissed. What you're seeing here is a fully monetized YouTube video, which is a plane crash compilation. An actual compilation of plane crashes in real life. It's running seven ads. Seven ad placements on a plane crash compilation. This is, this might be one of the worst things I've ever seen on YouTube. You obviously have the main principle of profiting off of hundreds of people's deaths, but not only that, you have the fucking audacity to put on your stupid fucking After Effects epic YouTuber intro on content that you literally just 
re-uploaded from the website, so it's not even original content, and you put on your fucking After Effects intro, you load up the video with seven ads, and you make money off of nine million views, and YouTube has done fucking nothing about this. God damn it, man. Just god damn it. Why is this website so fucking fucked up? And I've tried. I've tried for the past four months or so not to not complain about YouTube. They, they've tried communicating better. They've tried fixing the monetization system. But then I just see shit like this, and it's like we haven't left square fucking one. What the fuck, YouTube? Plane crash compilation. Fully monetized. How the fuck does a plane crash compilation slip under the radar? I don't understand what you people are doing. Fully monetized. Seven ad placements on a plane crash compilation. Not a fictional plane crash compilation. Real, actual footage. Not unlike the footage you'd find on Live Leak. The difference being that this person is earning thousands of dollars of revenue from hundreds of people dying. Dying! Logan Paul filmed one dead guy and the collective internet flipped their shit. But meanwhile you have people uploading footage of hundreds of people dying. Dying! Not already dead like Logan did. Dying! Your, your fucking system somehow sees that as perfectly okay. How? How come every respectable commentary channel on YouTube has basically been shadow banned and demonetized and kicked down the pecking order and scrutinized as hard as they possibly fucking can by your fucking automated system for the past 18 months. Meanwhile, plane crash compilation? Oh, that's perfectly fine. Load it up with ads. I, I usually don't get this angry about anything. Politics? I don't really care that much. Whatever. But when I see a system that is just so fundamentally unfair as YouTube's monetization system is, I lose my fucking shit. They tell us all the rules. They tell us all the rules over and over again and hammer it into our heads. Don't do this, don't do that. And even if you follow those rules, there's a 50-50 chance that your video is just gonna get demonetized anyway because they blacklisted your channel or something like they've done with mine where they don't send out your videos to recommendations or notifications or subscriptions. They've done it to me. They've drugged my channel and a bunch of other people's through the fucking mud because we dare speak up about this bullshit. They turn their back away from plane crash compilations. It's like you can't make this shit up. We are in the dystopian present on YouTube. This is their end game. This is what all the fucking shit, all the changes, all the to make your videos longer, more, more, more content. Oh, but don't make original content. We'll, we'll shit on you for that. Oh, but, but if you're re-uploading someone else's content and it just happens to be plane crashes and you put it all back to back and you have a, a fucking After Effects intro with obnoxious EDM music, that's perfectly fine. This is their end game, I guess. They, they, made, they made YouTube inhospitable for original content. They made YouTube inhospitable for talent. They don't emphasize any of that on YouTube anymore. It's all about, oh, how long can you make your, oh, how much watch time? Who gives a fuck about watch time, okay? And I'll tell you why they do it is because the more time you spend on YouTube, the less time you spend on a competitor site like Facebook. But even so, what has this done to the content on YouTube? I know I made a whole 49 minute video about this, talking about the consequences of all this shit, but, but we're there. This is as bad as I've ever seen YouTube content, okay? Monetizing plane crash tragedies. Plane crash compilations. Like, I still can't fucking believe it, but it, the video's right there, still running ads on it. How the fuck is it morally consistent to just scrub YouTube from gun content 
But, oh, plane crash compilations? That's perfectly fine. God, I just don't understand this website. It's like they never learn. They never learn. Elsa Gate, Child Endangerment, no, we're gonna get rid of that content once it starts, once the ads start pulling out. Logan Paul, Suicide Victim, the worst PR disaster for YouTube ever? Certainly ever. And they still won't police this shit. And I said this on Twitter. How the fuck? How the fuck does a video titled Airplane Crash Compilation not immediately set up a million alarms in the demonetization system? How is that not set off a million red flags? Just instantly demonetize this video. But now it's been up there, the video's like a year old. It's like eight months old. Running seven ads, nine million views, probably made a couple thousand bucks off of that content. I've moved past the idea of complaining about the idea of demonetization, okay? If YouTube wants to implement a system where they only put ads on family-friendly content, then whatever. But if you put in a system like that, you have to, have to, have to, absolutely have to enforce it fairly. I just hate being treated unfairly. And it's not just me, it's every YouTuber, gaming channels, commentary channels, pretty much every YouTuber that tries to put an effort into their content these days gets fucking sandbagged. And I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with that if they just did it with everyone. Maybe it's people. Maybe it's not YouTube. Maybe it's just people that are just so morally inconsistent about everything. I mean, Logan Paul uploaded a video of one dead guy. One guy who already died, and the internet lost their collective shit over it. And I'm not saying people don't care about this, but... I know, that video had 9 million views by the time I watched it, and never heard a peep about it. And it has hundreds of people dying. Not already deceased. Dying. And Logan Paul's video wasn't monetized. I mean, YouTube did put that shit on trending, but... Like, Logan Paul didn't monetize the video. This guy, plane crash compilation dude, seven ad placements on a video showcasing the deaths of hundreds of people. I know, it's just astonishing. And, and my little tweet about it will probably get a couple thousand likes and a few hundred retweets and that will be the end of it and everyone will forget about it. There'll be no, more, no massive outrage over the plane crash compilation. It's literally the same principle but a hundred times worse. But will people care? Will YouTube make a sappy apology for this? Will anything even happen to that video? Will I check back in six weeks and that video will still be raking in that revenue? I don't know. I don't know. Surprise me, YouTube. Surprise me. Okay? I just want to say one more thing before I end this rant. YouTube and a lot of people probably wonder why YouTube is so hated. Because I don't know if you've checked the internet in the past eight months, but... YouTube is hated. They're hated more than any other social network. They're hated. They're hated to the extent that someone actually got pissed off enough at them to break into their headquarters and shoot up the place. I'm not saying it's justified. No, it sucks. And it's a fucking deranged lunatic. But I don't know, it's just a testament. It's a testament to this hole that YouTube has dug themselves in where people hate them. People go fucking postal because of how bad YouTube has been over the past couple of years. And they wonder why. They wonder why. And it, it's not because YouTubers are entitled. It's not because millennials are lazy. No, it's because of inconsistent, unfair bullshit like this, where they police and scrutinize every chicken little thing from one tiny part of YouTube, and they just let plane crash compilations soak in the revenue regardless. It's, okay, it's this type of shit that drives people fucking mental, and they need to fix it. How much longer? 
how much longer are we gonna have to endure a system? Like either, either let everyone run ads or take the ads off fucking plane crashes, okay? And it's not just the, and don't think I'm just making this video about one video. It's like, it's like if you find a roach in your house, there's probably a hundred other roaches around. There's probably tens of thousands of videos like this. Fucking shitty compilations that rake in revenue from stolen content. And in these specific cases, rake in revenue from literally showcasing the tragedies and death and slaughter of hundreds of people. And I just want to say, YouTube wonders why they're the most hated website on the internet. It's because of shit like this. And until they fix it, it's not going to change. <laughs> People are still going to hate them. Just want to let you guys know that after the whole Logan Paul thing, YouTube really has been trying to improve their communication. They're basically responding to every knucklehead that pings them even 13 year olds with 2,000 subscribers. And yet, despite all of these responses, and even though after I tweeted to them that their platform is running ads on a plane crash compilation, they didn't say shit about it. And like dozens of people, dozens of people pinged YouTube at Team YouTube at YT Creators. Like a dozen people pinged them and no response. Radio silence. They might have me blocked or something. Yeah, it, it's, it's very clear that they're not interested in hearing what I have to say. So, whatever. Oh man, it looks like all my complaining finally paid off. This is just a reminder to everyone out there. That if you complain hard enough, and you shit post long enough, good things will happen. What's up everybody? Looks like Mumkey's book finally came in the mail. Looks like we got an unboxing video to do. Alright, so as you can see, there is a box. And uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's taped up pretty tightly, so... I, I think I'm going to have to go get some scissors. Alright everyone, I got the scissors. Snip, snip. Um, Alright, we're, we're going to work on cutting open the tape now. Uh, in case you didn't know, I'm, I'm left-handed. That's what makes me special. Alright, so... God! Fuck! Fucking right-handed normies. They think they're so cool. Their right hand. No, oh, we make it ninety percent of people. Fucking normies. Try that shit open. All right. So as you can see, um, Mumkey sent me some bubble wrap to complement the book. Shipping information. Aha! And the piece of resistance. Look at it. Look at the glory. Look how glorious this product is that I ordered. Oh, it's so it's shiny. This thing is shiny as fuck. Man, I can't wait to delve into the literary adventure that Mumkey has provided for me on this fine day. What's up, everybody? It's about a week later. Didn't really feel like recording anything for the last seven days. Yeah, so the reason I haven't been making anything is because I have been writing, researching, and recording this 20-page script. This might end up being the longest video I've ever made, and it might end up being the best video I've ever made. I should probably get you guys back up to speed on current events, because there's no way you know them yourself, so it's up to me to, to tell you and remind you. Alright, so uh, this image basically sums up the new memes that have been circulating over the past week. Oh, and uh, this morning there is another school shooting in America. What's up everybody, it's me again, here with another fantastic backyard commentary. 
Uh, first, let me just say that I haven't been vlogging as much because, I don't know, everything's just been really boring. I've been hard at work editing the new YouTube Geographic. It's going to be a big boy. Big time, big ticket video. Game changer. Game changing video. I know, it's probably going to come out after the first part of this vlog. So, be prepared for that. Alright, so it, it is currently May 22nd, 2018. And the news recently, there's been a lot of talk. A lot of talk about the old school shootings. School shootings. A lot of conversation about school shootings. Every time you hear the issue of school shootings mentioned in the news, all they talk about is gun, 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 rifle, gun, 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 assault weapon, gun, NRA, gun, gun, rifle, gun. And usually the times when gun control as an issue is discussed most frequently is immediately following a school shooting. It's a very evocative issue, which is why every time there is a school shooting in America, it gets reported on like crazy, and it becomes the single most salient issue for the next week at least. And obviously it's a problem that everyone wants to stop. And I'm pretty sure no one, whether you're Republican or Democrat or an Independent, no one thinks there should be more school shootings. But by that same token, everyone wants to scramble for a solution. As soon as the school shooting happens, the discussion immediately gets pinned and imprisoned in the idea that guns are the primary issue. And throughout all the news coverage, throughout all the discussion, all the arguments you see on Twitter, on YouTube, throughout all of it, I don't know, I've never seen anyone discuss what I think is the real issue in school shootings. And that issue, I believe, is the schools. The issue with school shootings is schools. Now before I talk about this, I want you all to just completely forget about guns, okay? Just completely wipe guns from your mind. Whenever there's a school shooting like this, it always happens with a very troubled kid. And instead of just blaming the idea of guns or people who enable guns, it's far, far, far more important in my opinion to consider what circumstances caused this kid to bring a loaded gun to school and start shooting his classmates. Because I don't know if you people have noticed, either if you're too old, you're too young, or you're not from America, but schools in America suck, okay? I live in the state of Florida, and the school district I went to is supposedly the best in the state of Florida. And you wanna know what? It still sucks. Just completely unstimulating to the actual concept of education. Just miserable kids all over the place. Nobody wants to be there, especially once you get closer to the age of 18. No one wants to be there. If you look at all these kids, all these school shooters, they all have certain things in common. First of all, they're usually very antisocial or socially awkward, and most of them have a history of being bullied by their classmates. Now, schools in America, they'll pretend, they'll say all these things about wanting to stop bullying, but in reality, it's completely unenforceable and there's nothing they can really do about it. And a lot, of, a lot of things that people don't understand because either they've been too far removed from school or they're in school and they've just accepted it as normality and they don't know any other way of life. One thing that these people rarely notice is that kids are vicious, okay? Pretty much between the age of 10 and 18, these kids are absolutely vicious. Obviously, it's very easy to look at young kids, and young teens, and imagine that they are very innocent, little harmless, defenseless victims. But 
I don't know, this is just coming from me, just observing how people act. And I was in school two years ago, and this is how people are. The problem with kids and early teens is that they have no concept of morality. They either have no concept or a very remedial concept of morality. And this is just, this is just an aspect of psychology where your brain is literally not finished developing in how to deal with ethics and morals. And it's important to remember that because kids, most of them, and there's a lot of nice ones, but there's a lot of ones that are completely vicious. And this isn't just, this isn't a new thing. This is a part of every generation. So kids in school, they're highly conscientious. They care so much about appearance and hierarchy and status. There's so much peer pressure to conform to societal norms. And the alternative is being ridiculed and cast aside as an outcast. What I'm basically saying is that it's just very natural for kids to sort of relentlessly pick on other kids that don't fit in. And I just think that there's this huge disconnect in our society with how we treat introverted people. And it's very ironic because we live in an age where schools and bureaucrats and politicians will bend over backwards to accommodate any person that they, to accommodate anyone who we view as a victim based on only physical traits. However, the great irony in all of this is that we have somehow ignored and continue to ignore the huge monumental difference between introverted kids and extroverted kids. And this is coming, again, from someone who, growing up in school, was very introverted, found it very hard to talk to people, and it's not just it's not just something you can easily just pick up and uh, we just throw you in with all these people, you'll make friends. No, it's not like that. And I think a lot of the problems that come with schools and behavior in 21st century America is a fundamental misunderstanding of how introverted people think and act. And it's a pretty alarming problem because if you really think about it logically, Pretty much everyone in power at not just schools, but in the government are going to be extroverted people. Like it's just a matter of natural selection. A clammy introverted guy who doesn't talk to anyone is gonna be far less likely to succeed in a political campaign. So based on that fact, pretty much everyone in politics, all of our lawmakers, they have to be extroverted people and the same theory applies to teachers and faculty, people who in their job description, they have to work and interact with people all day. They're naturally gonna be more extroverted people. And what that's created in our society, at least I feel, is a huge rift between the extroverted and the empowered people in our society growing up and introverted people who feel like they have no one to turn to. Because if you think about it from the perspective of an, of an introverted person growing up in school, like what are they gonna do if they have a problem? Naturally, the course of action in all these cases is to, oh, go talk to the teacher, go talk to the guidance counselor. But these teachers and guidance counselors, they're extroverted people and they don't understand the mentality of being introverted. It's a real shame because our school system treats introverted people so unbelievably poorly. And they are completely oblivious to that fact. I don't know if this concept resonates with any of you out there who may be introverted people, have trouble talking to people in public, are socially awkward, and you remember growing up in school and they force you, they force you to do all these activities, group work, group projects, bonding activities, and all of this is by the design of extroverted people who think everyone in the world is extroverted, when that's simply not true. And when you force introverted kids, place themselves in social situations with which they're uncomfortable, or to do these activities where you force them to interact 
with people they don't care for, you create a recipe for a very miserable individual. And it's a lot of these individuals who eventually grow up to become the prototypical school shooter. And I'm not saying it's justified at all. Obviously these people have been pushed to a point where they have mentally gone off the deep end and their actions are no longer governed by reason or morality. So I'm not trying to sympathize with school shooters at all, but at the same time, it's very important to understand where some of these kids are coming from. These are socially awkward, antisocial kids who are forced by our society to spend six hours a day, five days a week, 180 days a year in an environment where they are constantly uncomfortable. And once again, the vast majority of people in our society, they don't understand this point of view because when you're extroverted and it's about 70% of people, you don't feel this constant pressure and this constant anxiety when you're in public. It just doesn't make sense and you can't wrap your head around it and you can't develop empathy for these people. And when you're growing up in school, the majority of people just turn that idea of them acting different into ostracizing them and excluding them. And it just makes things a lot worse. So I guess my point with all this is that we need to understand and treat introverted people a lot better. And I think when we do, we will see a vast reduction in school shootings. If you think about these kids, if you think about the Houston shooter, if you think about Nicholas Cruz, why are we as a society forcing these kids who clearly do not belong in a social situation and every time they're exposed to a situation, it worsens their emotional state. Why are we forcing kids like this to go to school and be in an environment they hate? I don't understand, especially now that we have online school and there's so much of an opportunity for virtual school. And I don't buy in to this expectation that if you don't make friends, if you don't get along with people, then you're not going to have a good time as an adult. Yeah, well, first of all, these introverted antisocial kids, they're not having a good time as a child, okay? And it's not a matter of just making friends. It's an actual mental block. And I've experienced it. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced it. Where it's not just a thing where you can flip on a switch and be like, oh, well, I'm ready to make friends now. It's not that simple. And until our society understands this, there's going to be a fundamental disconnect in how we treat introverted people. And the idea, the idea that you have to be socially well-rounded to succeed in adult society is complete BS. Yeah, I, I'm sure you have to be really socially outgoing to sit at a computer in a cubicle for 11 hours a day. There's no actual requirement that you have to be socially outgoing in order to have a stable career and life in society. But for some reason, the powers that be have made it an expectation for people where, oh, you have to have people skills if you want to succeed. I don't buy into it at all. Maybe in the 1950s, but not now when 90% of all work in the world goes through the internet where you don't actually have to directly communicate between people. I don't buy for one second that you gotta be socially outgoing to succeed. It just doesn't make sense. And it's ridiculous, especially now that we have the internet and online schooling to continue forcing these introverted people to be miserable. And that's the real problem. And that's the real discussion we need to be having as to why these school shootings are happening. But uh, no one's gonna talk about that because gun, 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 assault rifle, gun, NRA, gun, 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 gun. Ah, what a beautiful day. I wonder what's going on with YouTube. Oh, well, time to make another video complaining about YouTube. Okay, I just wanna point out that it's really ironic and hilarious that I'm making a rant about YouTube. And in, in like 10 minutes, I'm having a consultation with 
a YouTube partner manager. You're literally watching the destruction of my YouTube career. They will never ever let me get any views after this. Hi everyone. Back at you again with the basketball. So I got off the old YouTube conference call with my very own partner manager. I should probably explain the context leading up to this encounter. I think about three weeks ago, I got emailed by a person from YouTube saying they want to contact me. Now, I've been a YouTube partner for almost four years now, but this was my first real interaction with an actual human that works at YouTube. I know, it's amazing. I always used to view YouTube as this monolithic, faceless corporation. And even though my opinion of YouTube hasn't really changed after this interaction, I do feel like I'm in a different place. I'm working my way up the ranks, guys. Uh, so how did the call go? Um, it was a little odd. I can't say it went differently than I expected. But still, though, the just the novelty of talking to an actual human who works at YouTube. It's something I've never really experienced before. There was one point in the conversation when I hinted at my videos being blacklisted and not showing up in people's recommendations. I'm 80% sure that this person I was talking to was aware of all the of all the videos I did complaining about YouTube. That was kind of the elephant in the room during the whole conversation and we never really discussed it. Because this person I talked to, they were aware of Minute Memes. They were aware of YouTube Geographic. It was clear to me that they at the very least skimmed my content. So I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't also know about the YouTube complaint stuff. So we talked for about 20 minutes. And it was a lot of introductory stuff, just asking me about sort of the direction of my channel. So we didn't get a, didn't really get to talk about anything that in depth. Um, however, we did schedule a meeting for uh, for June. One day in June, we're gonna have a meeting and we're gonna go a lot more in depth in the, into the discussion. So we'll just have to see what happens there. But after this encounter, I did have a change of heart with the uh, with the next YouTube rant. And after talking to this person at YouTube, I just don't think I can go through with uploading this rant as its own video. And that's not because I got brainwashed by the cult of YouTube. No, I still feel as strongly about that issue as I did before the meeting. The reason I don't want to publicize my distaste for YouTube policies is that I know now for sure that I'm being scrutinized. And I'm fairly certain that all those complaining videos I did back in December and January really, uh, they really rubbed old YouTube the wrong way. And it was only after I stopped that kind of stuff that my channel could finally go back to normal and they actually reached out and made contact with me. It was like, what do I have to gain by making this video? Everyone's already complaining about it. And even though I feel like my criticism is still valid, I just don't feel like there's much to be gained from this. I feel like I have a really big opportunity here to really work my way up into the inside of YouTube to really see the truth of how YouTube works. And I don't want to jeopardize that opportunity just yet. I don't know. It feels like kind of a cop-out, doesn't it? I mean, for the past two years, I've been so high and mighty about speaking my mind at whatever cost. But I don't know. I just feel different now. YouTube is a huge machine. And if you're not careful, they will destroy you. And as much as I like standing up for people that YouTube fucks over on this website, there comes a point where I just end up fucking myself. So after thinking about it, I decided I'm not going to upload that rant as its own video. But at the same time, I kind of don't want it to go to waste. So I'll probably just stick it at the end of this vlog. 
You know, I really didn't want to make another video where I whine and bitch and moan and complain about YouTube. I didn't want to be that guy. I've been holding off on the complaints for about four months now. But just this week, YouTube announced something so insanely idiotic that I have to talk about it. So last summer I uploaded a video called YouTube has been on a downward spiral, where I basically run down point by point everything wrong with YouTube today. And in that video I talked about how YouTube has gradually taken steps to take power away from the individual and emphasize content that they want you to see. So remember when people on YouTube actually had to go out and explore the content they wanted to watch? Well, not anymore. Now you can just sit back and relax while the algorithm delivers you all the content you should be watching. No user input required. Just click on your homepage and YouTube will recommend you all the videos that they know you like watching. Oh, what's that? You want to watch your subscriptions? You know, the channels that you already like for sure, to the extent that you want to be notified of their future uploads? Well, fuck you! You don't know what you like, but the algorithm does! So we're setting your homepage to default. Fuck subscriptions! Well, everyone, I'm proud to announce that we have reached the end game. We have reached the climax of Susan W's master plan because YouTube has announced that they are experimenting with the subscription function, the most fundamental, basic function that has been a part of this website since day one. Imagine if Facebook started experimenting with the friends function, or if Reddit started experimenting with the karma function. Well, that's what YouTube is doing with subscriptions. And of course, we all know what they mean by experimenting. They're gonna say it's optional for a couple of months and then quietly make it mandatory. Just like they do with every change they make. So I'm gonna interpret this as a change that has already been made. And a decision that's already set in stone. This is happening. It's always been happening. And they've just now gone public with it because they're gonna release it on everyone in a few months. And we all know what they're gonna do. They're gonna use the subscription feed as yet another vehicle to control the content you see. They already did it with the homepage. They already did it with the trending tab. They already did it with the notification bell. The subscription feed was the last bastion that was supposedly out of YouTube's control. And I don't even think that's been true for the past two years. Do you have any idea how many people have messaged me saying that my videos did not appear in their subscriptions? And I don't think it's a coincidence that most of these claims happened after a stretch where I made several videos criticizing YouTube. So based on that evidence, I think YouTube has been testing out this system for a long time already. And they'll tell you the lie that they say for every other change they make where they take away personal choice. They'll say that they're only showing you the content you want to see. And that content, of course, is not governed by your own agency, but by a machine learning AI that estimates the videos you may or may not be interested in. And then we get to the real truth of why YouTube makes changes like this. And let me tell you, it's sure as hell not to give you the videos you want to see, but rather it's to hide the videos that they don't want you to see. Once again, they already do this with the homepage, trending, recommendations, and notifications. Research has demonstrated that YouTube shadow bans mature and questionable content from these locations. And I'm pretty sure they'll restrict and censor this video criticizing them, just like they did with my Logan Paul video, so be on the lookout for that, I guess. YouTube has sunk their claws into almost everything on the whole website, and subscriptions were the last thing they didn't fully control, the last nugget of individual choice that a YouTube viewer has over the content they want to see. Subscribe to a user and you'll see their new uploads. It's as simple as that. It's been here since 2005. And yet, YouTube has become so power hungry that they want to wrestle that away from the people too. And guess what? They already have, behind our backs as usual. This change is gonna happen, mark my words. YouTube never backtracks on any new feature, no matter how unpopular it is. And they always try to back it up saying, Oh, well the analytics show that... Trust us, we're so smart, we're from Silicon Valley and we're smarter than you. And the numbers say this is a good idea. And that's all anyone cares about on this website anymore. Numbers, numbers, numbers. 
Why do you think there are 10,000 grown ass adults on this website who play with toys for a living? Oh, just look at the numbers. Why do you think Logan Paul felt it was necessary to film a dead body and put it on YouTube? Well, have you seen the numbers that got him? And after removing the functionality of subscriptions, guess what will happen to subscribers on YouTube? That's right, they'll be demoted to just a number. Hey YouTube, not everything can be measured in numbers and stats and analytics. And if you let them govern you, they will destroy you. Can you guys put a number on how you have managed to become the single most hated social media site on the entire web? Even worse than Facebook? There's a site that started chasing numbers, and three years later Mark Zuckerberg is seen as a literal reptile and they have to spam sappy apology ads on national television. There's something to be said about short-term versus long-term growth. Sure, I could film a video of myself drinking a beaker full of sulfuric acid, and that video would probably have great numbers in the short term. But what about the long term, YouTube? What about the long term? I'm not going to be getting many more views after being dead. So go ahead, YouTube. Keep letting numbers run this website. There's no way you could possibly end up like Facebook, or Skype, or Dig, or MySpace. Keep treating your users like brain-dead toddlers who can't decide on their own what videos they want to watch. You know what? They probably make up most of your viewers anyway these days. You chased away all of your older, dedicated viewers by alienating them time and time again. When you take subscriptions away from the subscribers, you take the you out of YouTube. Now, it's just a tube.